You have to have a split stand so you can encourage rotation, you know? And actually, the best exercise forever, and don't tell anyone because I might lose my business, is to do the twist. And when you do the twist and look up and down, you're patterning all the time. You got a bad back? It's many times from your ankles and from your shoulders. So you get everything twisting, everything starts to calm down. Mr. Boutros Boutros Ghali was the Secretary General of the United Nations. So, you know, here I am working on a man who's trying to help with world peace. <laughs> and when I finished with him one time, because there's ministers of everything, he says, Mr. Adams, you must talk to my wife for the payment. She is Minister of Finance. <laughs> so when people come in, First is breath. You have to have the breath to connect with the mind, the nervous system, and the whole body. You don't have to go into a room and do that, although that's nice. You can do a moment of meditation, a four second cycle. You've meditated. You've given yourself a pause and then go back to your work. My oldest joke came upon a couple of beers in Michigan was that, you know, our DNA is a spiral. It's a helix. So that's how we have to move. We have to spiral. Sam, how are you? I'm fine, Hoss. Nice to talk with you. Nice talking to you. So for people that are going to watch this video, let me give you a little background. About three weeks ago, my back was really hurting. And I went online, looked the top sports massage therapist in Maryland. The first one was Sam Adams. So I contacted him. I went to him and we had an amazing session. Not only was he able to help me with my back, he taught me several things that elevated my mood completely just by philosophies of movement, how we should move. And the body and the mind are so connected. So Sam, can you give us a little bit of introduction about you? You can do a better job than I would and tell us about your program. All right, thank you very much, Hoss, for giving me this opportunity. I'm gonna immediately just kind of give an, a fast overview of how I work. I work with a three-point plan. I use medical massage with massage and interactive stretching. So first of all, I clinically evaluate movement patterns and devise a strategy to work with people. Second, then I apply interactive massage with stretching only for two seconds to respect the stretch reflex, both on the table and then with people standing so they're up in gravity. And then finally, I, uh, we record on video a personalized movement program for progressive relief. So when you leave here, I'm going to give you tools on a video library so you're always making these, these little uh, patterning movements. I like principles in that you can use the stretch reflex two second idea when you're rehabbing general conditioning and even when you're starting to throw weights and also i'm always available for people to consult again after they've left here if they have any more questions amazing sam so you've been doing something called rolfing for 40 years i yes. assume most people don't know what that is so give us a little bit i want to bring it into a broader context of my educational background rolfing is a form of deep myofascial massage and I have changed my approach and how I use rolfing and I've integrated it with a bigger picture of my complete history and education. So rolfing's essential idea was what's your relationship with gravity? How's your posture? How's your range of motion? I originally started out as a massage therapist uh, down in Sarasota, Florida and I was exposed to a kinesiologist named Aaron Mattis. And Aaron has an interesting book called Isol Active Isolated Stretching. And what I would watch him do, he would take people, older people, through a two second stretch. If you only go to two seconds, you never exceed your stretch reflex and you keep the spring in your movement. Very important because I find sometimes people overstretch, they hold like a 30 to 60 second stretch or they get manipulations where there's too much pressure held too long. And my joke is you never see a dog or a cat do a 30 second stretch. You watch them, they come in and out. The bigger joke is then you don't see them go into a hot room after that to continue stretching. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. from my beginnings with massage and then two second stretching, I thought, well, how can I increase my work? What, what's the next direction? And I thought, well, rolfing seems to work went to rolfing school. But what I found out is that with rolfing, there's deep pressures that are held for, for a longer time. I like the friction of the rolfing, but I only go in for two seconds with the combination of stretching and then retreat. So I'm always pulsing and patterning 
very conservative and very progressive, so we never get in trouble. For instance, if a person comes in and they have a knot, well, the knot's a barometer of imbalance elsewhere in the body. And underneath everything that I do, you have to have a functional movement patterning, which embraces the two second idea. So I've been able to use the massage and rolfing ideas, but make it my own under this umbrella of the stretch reflex. That's amazing. And I've experienced that actually just today I was having a walk this morning and I was walking stiff as I usually do. And then I remembered oh, I need to, the suspension and the spiraling and immediately my mood changed. Everything shifted. Yes. I have a few points that I give to everyone in the office and out of the office. The first is breath. You know, I like, I like the two second idea for breath as well. You can breathe in for two, hold for two, exhale for two, and then repeat. You can even do that during the day if you're at work. You don't have to go into a room, you know, and, and do that, although that's nice. If you're, on, if you're waiting for an answer, you can do a moment of meditation, a four second cycle. You've meditated, you've given yourself a pause, and then go back to your work. So when people come in, first is breath. You have to have the breath to connect with the mind, the nervous system, and the whole body. So we use breath during the session. Next, we do an assessment, and I like a clinical assessment, information that I've derived from Gray Cook's functional movement systems. Uh, there's two that I use, the selective functional movement assessment or the functional movement assessment. And what it does, you look, this one here has um, cervical flexion, rotation, the arms, segmental uh, knee bend, single leg stance, and overhead stunt. When I observe how you do these, that gives us an idea for the strategy for the session. Because we don't want to just be working everywhere. You may have a knot somewhere. Well, why is that knot? So let's look at, is there a pattern involved? Is one side tighter? How's your posture? So first is breath. Then we have a suspension of posture when we move and go out into the world. So you're like a big spring when, you, when, when you're moving. And I like to have people take these two second ideas from my office and put them at home. So for instance, can I bring this over here? Mm -hmm. If we were working together, I would use, you know, like a trampoline so I could get people to gently start to bounce. They might be up against the wall with a ball, right? Going back and forth very gently. You don't want to hold a stretch hard if you have pain or not. You want to work with getting that pulse and pattern spring. Once you have that established, now you can put strength on. Now you can put strength. So you have to have stability first, and then the stability makes allows your nervous system to give you an extension and then you come back right. now what i like to do i like to go from side to side i'll work on one side back then let's do the other side now we come back same thing with stretching your your suspension you spiral to one way looking up you spiral to the other way looking up and you can use the wall you can use your stairs mm -hmm. you know doing little lunges when you get out of the car if during the day you're doing small little patterning, when you go to the gym, you're solid and you're ready to start to use weight. Same idea though, with weight, like I like kettlebells. So if I was gonna be doing a kettlebell exercise, I would come down. So now I'm doing a squat. Now I'm coming up, right? And then mm -hmm. I can switch, switch feet, come down. I can come up. And then also now I can start to walk and, and change up the exercises. You right. have to have a split stance so you can encourage rotation, you know, and actually mm. the best exercise forever. And don't tell anyone because I might lose my, my business is to do the twists. There was a, there was a great uh, singer called Chubby Checker. Mm. And when you do the twist and look up and down, you're patterning all the time. You got a bad back. It's many times from your ankles and from your shoulders. So you get everything twisting. Everything starts to calm down. You have a better pattern and you hold your work. You don't, you know, I don't want you coming back every week for the same thing. I want to start you here, give you the tools. And then mm -hmm. once you've improved your structure, people come back just to get, you know, a relaxing massage, which is fine. But they come originally, I have a, a neck, a pain somewhere. Let's address that first in the shortest amount of sessions with tools. And then come back to see me, maybe get a relaxing massage. But structure first, relaxation second. So I'm curious, rolfing is like a lifestyle, a movement, a way of movement, a philosophy, not necessarily for people who are injured, just for everyone, something that in a perfect world, everyone would learn about. 
the principles, the principles of what's your relationship with gravity? How are your segments working with each other? Now, when you go to school, you know, you, you, you work with 10 sessions, but when you start to test and add two second stretch reflex, you don't have to do 10 sessions. I try to work with a person for a session, maybe three, you know, you can space it out, five maximum for structure. After that, people would come back once a month or once every two months just to relax. But mm. again, in the big circle of things, because I had started with massage, kinesiology with Aaron Mattis, went to rolfing school. Then I actually had the opportunity to work with a family and travel with them. And when we would come back to New York, I got privileges to go to the New York hospital's rehab department and observe lectures and participate with therapists. So my education has not been formal, but I've been able to go to the places to see where progress has been made and work with the most influential people, you know, in their fields. I, I had a session once, the founders of a um, functional movement system was Greg Cook. I got to go down and demonstrate my two second reflex with his testing on him. I got a thumb up when the boss says it's good. That feels great. Aaron Mattis in Florida, you know, I, I worked with him and developed an appreciation for his two second stretch reflex. I saw him take older people and give them a second chance within a month of just doing this type of uh, movement. Um, I worked with Dr. Uh, Villabald Nagler at the New York Hospital's rehab department. He supervised my work when I worked for this family to make sure that the right prescription exercises were being given. And then for 12 years from Baltimore, I would go up to the New York City because we moved on here from New York. And I went to a physical therapy clinic and observed the therapist using these functional movement screens to add more economy and direction to the work. Because you don't want to just be working everywhere. You're gonna have a plan. You have to have a direction. You need an algorithm. And then once you've got them started on the road, you gotta give them the tools so they keep making progress. And then, you know, you're kind of handing them the ball and then you're running with it. So that's amazing. You say the rolfing, it's just part of the picture. I don't work like traditional rolfers because no one works with that two second idea, which I've developed and taken from other places. Cause I wanna be conservative, but progressive and respect the nervous system and the mind. Right. So I think I read online that you also worked with Butros Butros Gali. Is that true? <laughs> I did. <laughs> when I was in New York, I had a few wealthy clients and they know other wealthy people. So Mr. Butros Butros Gali was the Secretary General of the United Nations. So, you know, here I am working on a man who's trying to help with world peace. So I want to make sure I do my best. I mean, <laughs> But he was very funny because I would travel to his residence on the on the east side where, where the, the UN uh, apartment, the building was. And when I finished with him one time, he says to me, because there's ministers of everything, he says, Mr. Adams, you must talk to my wife for the payment. She is minister of finance. <laughs> so <laughs> he was very charming and, and it was an honor to, to work with him. That's amazing. It's funny. And you got the accent right, too. I'm from Egypt, so I'm very familiar with the accent. Right. I also, uh, when I worked for this family, uh, it was it was a shipping magnet named Stavros Niarchos. Back in the 60s, there was Aristotle Onassis, Stavros Niarchos. But Mr. Niarchos needed someone to travel with him to give exercises from the New York hospitals, rehab department, and get massage. But he had interesting people that, that would come to visit him. We were in Greece. Because Greeks, they have their own island, you know, that's what they'd have. Mm -hmm. And the first week I was there, the great ballet dancer, Rudolf Nureyev, came to spend a week there. And I got to work with him. And that was, there's a great documentary out called Nureyev. And it's an amazing mm. story about a man who left his country for his art. It was, it's very touching if you're a dancer, mm. you would enjoy it. Yeah. But I got to work with him. And, and you know, so I had a variety of interesting people who've given me influence you know, on my journey to where I am yeah. today. That's amazing. So let's let's make this practical to people that are going to be watching this. So many of us sit all day. Some of us have stand up desks at work. So sure. what are best practices to do during the eight hours of work or the nine hours of work? It's a great question. And I'm big on ergonomics. I'm big on ergonomics. You know, when you start your day, you can begin to pattern right from the bed to stand up. But now you're at the desk, right? So, you know, everyone has these um, these little stands here like this. You can use these. Mm -hmm. You have your computer here. You have your computer up. 
Remember, you've got your posture, but you can put a leg up on that and then mm. rock and then you switch. Remember, you're switching. So you're always mm. having gentle motion and you're not just sitting down. So you know, we don't we, want to remain static for long periods of we time. We never want to remain static because we're, we're supposed to move. You know, and when a person has a, a problem, the less movement you get, the muscles start to, you know, get tight and stuff. So being able to stand, switch legs, make motions, make spiraling, it's your dance. If you just use these principles, you can get through your day. Now, it doesn't mean you're not going to sit. You're going to you're going to sit, but sitting down also, you can get a sense of that posture. You don't have to be falling in, you know, see, so you check yourself. OK, you can rock back and forth as you're working. OK, I'm feeling let me stand now. You can come up and then and then bring the computer up, work, you know, and then even during the day, get up. There's your wall, right? Come up, back. You're, you're switching, so you're spiraling. You only might do one or two, but you give it a little patterning. Back to work. Mm. Take a two-second breath, two-second exhale, two-second pause. You've meditated. And that'll keep you going during the day. Also, when you leave and you go down the stairs, you know you've always got you've got here the. You can use your stairs as a lunging platform, right? Mm. So you can come in and then you're always looking up. You're never looking down. Be always looking up. Right? Hmm. So why you, why looking up? What's the benefit of looking you're up? Trying, you're trying to get the suspension behind it. If you start from here, people tend to fall forward. But if you get it behind the head a little bit, you set yourself up as a spring and doing so can even influence your shoulders and your movement. I've had people when, you know, I test them, if their head is straight, it only goes so many degrees. If they bring the head back and then and then twist, they get more range of motion. I've done I've not touched them, just the position and, a, and an improving a pattern through the whole body from behind the neck down to the feet. Right. Um, also, like with sleeping, you know, I always say when you're on your bed, you have pillows, you know, because you should have pillows. If you're on your side, you have pillows in between your legs. So your legs are all your your hips always neutral. If your leg falls over during the night, it starts to overstretch and then you wake up with an overstretch. Remember, we're trying to keep our stretches limited. And mm -hmm. when you have good position during the night on your side, also when you're having a lower pillow on right. your back, maybe some pillows under your knees, you're mm -hmm. neutral and you get a good night's sleep. Amazing. So that's a good general idea and tips for people to do also while at work. So you know that I have this weird diagnostic called muscle tension dysphonia, and he gave me some exercises to do. Can we talk about those a little bit as well so that people can learn about them? So one of the points that I, I instruct people on how to work on themselves. So when they leave, they can use these two second manipulations as well as stretches. So a person who has perhaps tight jaws, that can pull the head forward and there's that pressure behind you. So we want to get inside and work on the jaws mm -hmm. to be able to soften that. Also in the front here, right? You can, if you have your hands on your, your chest, you can, you can come down and then back, right? Back and forth like this. So you're slowly stretching the front because when the front stretches, now that head can get its suspension behind here. Also the mm -hmm. chest as well. The chest, the ch all remember that you have a big web through the whole body. It's not mm -hmm. just local. It's never isolated. So from top to bottom, many times the people can do two second stretches in, in the doorway or up against mm -hmm. the wall. That's pulling into the neck as well. Mm -hmm. So you want to go beyond where well, you have discomfort. You say, what's above, what's below that I need to work on with stretching and patterning. So now it's getting supported and it can calm down because pain yeah. is always a barometer of imbalance somewhere else. You don't work on the knots aggressively. That's telling you, help me elsewhere, you know? Yeah. And when I was learning massage and stuff, or, you know, you were taught to find the knot and destroy it. It serves a purpose. And if you aggressively work it, then it's going to soar. It's going to spasm. So be nice to knots, you know, it's not, right. the knot, it's elsewhere. Right. That makes sense. So I have a friend and a client that has the dip in the chest. I forgot what it's called medically, but it's, what can they do to support it? Well, you can't change bone fast, but you can change the muscles and the fascia that come from that area that come out to the ends. So again, those types of stretches, you know, they give some relief and they can be done daily, you know, just to kind of keep the devil out the back door because you're not going to go in and just People work too hard on themselves, and sometimes they work too hard in the gym thinking like, if I just muscle this up, it's going to calm everything down, I'll be good. 
No, no, you have to approach it gently. So your friend, you know, standing, I like standing exercises. I don't like to sit down. Same thing in a gym. If you're going to be doing things with the chest, you want to be up, you're going to be using a pulley machine. You know, you're, you're standing up. So you, you get the whole posture involved in your movement. If you're sitting down, half your legs are gone. So you want your legs to be part of your stretch that goes through your chest and up to your hands, you know. And remember, we're not holding, so we can, you can even be making, when you make it your dance, you can even start to add more rotations, you know, so you, you look like a modern dancer. Right. That's, that's the healthiest way to move, you know, that type of rotation as a right. dancer. Right. You, you mentioned to me that the whole universe is spiraling and we should pattern our movement in the same format. Well, my oldest joke idea that I came upon a couple of beers in Michigan was that, you know, our DNA is a spiral. It's a helix. So yeah. that's how we have to move. We have to spiral, you right. know, our whole movements to uh, honor that. Right. I tested the legitimacy of that, not only philosophically, because once I patterned my movement that way, I noticed my mood shifting. So I'll just say that to that. I also have a friend and a client that has the curved spine. Is there something that she can implement in her thought pattern, in her movement patterning that can help yes. support it? Again, extension, because, you know, you're trying to get the, you're trying to take some tension off the curves. You oh, can't suspension. The curves, but, but again, if you're up like at the gym, to be able to, to hold like the bars up there and then alternate, alternately, you know, let and, and twist. You're not holding it because the body's already, already compensating and in, in holding its curves. You just want to fluff the curves and then have it go out through the through the hands and the feet. Now, I have a friend who has scoliosis, and the, we went to the doc. The doc says, well, you know, we, your curves haven't, haven't increased, but you need to strengthen your core musculature. And sometimes that phrase core is just too broad. I, I, I like to make it be reflexive patterning and movement. That's what your core is. The core has to fire first. Those are the little stabilizer muscles that fires first. Then the big dogs, the big muscles make the movement, and then it turns off. Resets, goes again. If you don't have that core stabilization, the bigger muscles are being asked to do both. And as a compensation and as a compromise, then it stiffens up. So you're moving, but you not with the quality movement you have because your brain's trying to say, I don't have the stability. I'm going to use the bigger muscles, but I'm going to slow down the range to be protective. So a good thing to do, like when you go down to the fridge, you know, and you got the door here, you can do a planks or planks of the thing, but I don't like planks on the, on the ground that are just held. I want movement. I want, so if I'm going to come up here, I can start here and do a little bit of a marching. And then I can start to come down, the, come down here slowly and go back up. So I'm getting more of that anterior strengthening but in a pulse, in a pattern, and you're going up and down. You don't want to stay there. And, and in getting the front to be a little bit more strong and reflexive, it, it positively affects the back. So the two things you've got, you're standing up and you can even use, you know, do we have um, a railing? You know, you can have a railing to be underneath the railing, you know, you bend your knee and then see my left arm is to my right foot. I always remember I'm, I'm rotating other side come down. So all these stretches coming up from the top, going through to the feet, that takes discomfort off the edges. Mm -hmm. And that makes it a little bit easier to live with. You're not going to correct, but you want to take uncomfortable pressures off. And then adding patterning like that during the day can make them live a little bit more comfortable. Right. It's almost like thinking of the body rather than a linear machine, thinking about it as a like a rubber band that is flexible and it gets to rotate. Yes, sir. You know, we're, you know, everyone kind of marches around like robots, but it's, it's the spirals. It's the spirals that allow you to have imbalances in your structure and, and to work with those. If you look at the body side to side, top to bottom bones, everything, there's different tones from side to side. One side might be longer. We're not perfectly symmetrical, but to be able to accommodate and work with that suspension, you know, and spiraling, helps to temporarily calm down areas. And then with time, you want it to be able to sustain it, but you want to work towards that point respectfully. You don't want to kind of go in like a bull and say, come on, open. No, you got to, you got to approach it back and forth appreciatively 
And then the nervous system will work with you. As soon as you go into a long stretch and tighten up, the nervous system is going, what's going on here? And it tightens against you. Now you're going to mm. fight against that and go through that. Now you've overstretched the tissue. You've lost your patterning. And you have to recover from your own stretch. I had a football player who was with the Ravens. And he came in. And what had happened, he, had, he was out on the field practicing. And he had done a long overstretching program from his friend. And he went onto the field, and because he was so overstretched, he wasn't turning on and off as he was supposed to. Already overstretched, he made a cut. That overstretched muscle then pulled. Now he's injured himself because of this idea that you have to do these long stretches and turn yourself into a Gumby. Once you've done that, you've lost the chance to pattern and rehab. Right. Too much mobility can become too much mobility. Yes, sir. You want to have stability prior to mobility. That's a pattern. Right. Movement is supposed to be explosive, like a heartbeat. When the heart pushes the blood out, it, extend, it, it expands all the vessels. While the heart is refilling, that elasticity pushes the blood back towards it. Same thing with us. If I move my hand back here, let go, I didn't move that. The spring did that. So we right. want to get the body into that spring. That's, that's lost energy. We want to be economical. We're designed to spiral and spring. And that way you, you put movement in and then the movement comes back to you. Amazing. So I noticed when you worked on me during the massage, you were doing these pulsating moves, these pu push two seconds, push two seconds. So what does that do? Does that release fascia? Does that release muscle, increase blood? What is it exactly from the Rolfing standpoint? Well, neurologically, we're working with the stretch reflex. And they found out that you can go into a stretch for two seconds and then re retreat and you still keep a patterning potential there. And what used to happen was like I would over-treat and then an airway would open up, but it was the tissue opening and not the nervous system. The reason that I work that way is that I can work around areas and not aggravate them. Because many times people say, oh, my back is hurt. Or, and they say, oh, I've been stretching into this painful area. No, the area that's painful says, help me elsewhere. We think that yeah. we've got to, we've got to, we want to grind that knot. We've got to overstretch the area. You might get some temporary endorphin from that, but then it's going to fade and then you're going to tighten up again. And you're going to feel sore the next day. If you mm. follow the two second routine, you can respectfully extend and keep extending safely into end ranges. So mm. then that's your pattern because if you're trying to open something up, you want to be able to move back and forth pulse and pattern to get to your end range. You can't just hold it and then wait for it to open. When that happens, now you've overstretched. Yeah. But if, if, you're, if you're trying to get here and you hold it there, you'll you'll overstretch. But if I come back and forth little by little, there I am safely yeah. achieving my stretch. Mm. One from side to side. Remember, we're, we're spiraling. We want to get that dance in there. Right. Everybody would be out there in the dancing. When, if I'm, you're outside, you want to be checking the heavens. If you're inside, you want to be checking the ceiling. Yeah, that's right. The cobwebs <laughs> on the ceiling corners. <laughs> <laughs> right. So... Let's say someone with lower back pain, they lifted something the wrong way and they compressed their lower back. What can they do to decompress their lower back? What they can do is you can use the stairs. You know, you can use the stairs and do your gentle two seconds and under lunging as mm. you're going up the stairs. Also, you can go down the stairs. Also, the bedroom, when you get up off your bed, the bedroom is a chance for you to roll, get on your knees. You're going to recreate our original libraries, what you learned as a baby. No one taught you that. You had to crawl. You had to learn. You had to learn. You had to learn your head. All that's our library, which I try to access and then tell people, when you start your day, start to do these, these rolls back and forth. So then when you stand up, now when you go into your, your doorway and do your two-second stretches, you're taking pressure off the back from the feet and from the chest. Now right. we do our two second lunges going up or down the stairs. You're going that way anyways, you know, so right. you can add that. You don't have to wait till five o'clock and say, okay, time to go to the gym during work. Yeah. You know, when you have a moment, you're cooking a meal, add these small little moments. It doesn't have to be long. It can be, you know, maybe three movements, but you pat yeah. during the course of the day, that pressure on your back now is being, is being assisted by patterning towards the ends. Right. So every morning when I wake up, I get on the floor and I bring my knees to my chest and then I drop my knees to one side and my back cracks and it feels really good. And then I do it on the other side. Is that something that you support or not support? As long as it's two seconds, do it all. Okay. 
you know, and then you can you can actually bring your arms out. You can play with that, you know, because you're out of gravity, mm-hmm. and you. But then you then you can get onto your knees, you know, move back and forth or onto all fours. Then you get to the corner of the bed, and you can rock back and forth, and use your hands to push off. Use your hands to push off. So you're you don't want to just stand up. If your back is bugging you, use the rest of your body as you should to, to come up, you know, and that way the episode will start to calm down and eventually it will uh, recede. And then if you keep patterning, it's not going to come back. Now right. you're ahead of the game. Just mm-hmm. be sure the next time you lift something heavy, you know, okay, am I, am I, am I, am I ready for my posture? Let me bring it close to me. Okay. And then you advance. You know, right. it's always after the fact that we learn our lessons. So. Right. Do you recommend or do you support someone hanging from a pull-up bar for 10 seconds or hang from a pull-up bar, but keep it at two seconds? Two seconds. That's two all seconds. I'm asking is two. And actually, I actually, when I do that stuff, I'll actually have a the bench and I'll hold and I'll I'll come I'll come up, right? And then I'll come down, let myself down. I switch feet. So I always have contact. All animals, when you see them move, they always try to maintain, it's called closed chain. You know, they they have a foot on somewhere to support the hands and, and vice versa. Also, doing those pull-ups, you know, you, you can stand up and then hold and then let yourself down in two seconds. That's an eccentric movement, but that's a safe movement. They use that in rehab facilities. They don't want you going concentrically yet. They want you to be able to come down. Well, what a great way to train in the beginning. You know, yeah. so then as you get better, you know, you can start to maybe you'll you'll be able to pull yourself up more and having less push off of the feet. That's yeah. when you, that's when you're making strength still safely with stability mm-hmm. and support underneath. Because yeah. many people, you know, when it's younger, you can have micro trauma doesn't affect you yet. But when you get older, all that scar tissue, all those little injuries, going to catch up to you. So why not start in the beginning, pattern properly, two seconds. And you can use it across everything. You know, if you're when you have to rehab in the beginning and it has to be easy, fine. Then you get into general conditioning, fine. But then when you get into your, you know, your kettlebells and stuff, you're doing two seconds and switching and stuff. So mm-hmm. no, yeah. no animal holds a weight and walks around the world like this, you know? Right. It has, to, it has to come back and forth. Remember, we're springing, we're pulsing, we're patterning. That's right. the way the nervous system likes it. And then you add variety. You right. know, you do the same thing, the brain says, what are you doing? Make, make it interesting. You That's know? right. Make it a dance. All right. So, Sam, thank you for all the knowledge and love that you dropped today. So, where can people find you? Um, you can find me. My telephone number is 917 693 3712. I have an Instagram at um, Sam Adams Medical Massage, I believe it is. Okay. I'll link that in the description. Okay. And then I have my. My website, adamsrolfingtherapy.com. But I encourage people to, to call me so we can either FaceTime and chat so they get a sense of what I'm offering. I, I appreciate that the one-on-one contact through the whole process. And then I have people actually, you know, they always have, I'm always available 24-7. They want to review an exercise or get some advice. So, Yeah. Thank you so much, Sam. Thank you very much. Yeah. What When I explain rolfing, I explain it now as, Rolfing myofascial massage because I use the ideas of Rolfing, the principles, gravity, and also the application of a strong friction for a moment, not oil, but just friction causes a manual stretch. And in doing so, that's what's doing. So now I add the manual stretch with the active stretch. Now mm-hmm. we got a twofer, all under two seconds, uh, uh, retreat reset, and then repeat, but you're going other side or working up the chain. Mm. So what is a manual stretch and what is a, an active stretch? Well, a manual stretch would be an application of physical pressure from my end across the joint. The Rolfing was big on, on friction, big big on adding a friction to massage. You didn't use oil. Mm. So you were getting kind of a, a, a manual stretch as opposed to just doing a, a, a yoga stretch. But I like to take the the friction, the manual stretch, and then add it immediately to the active stretch for two seconds and then ret- retreat and then work again. That way you, yeah. you're, you're kind of back and forth, back and forth, up and down a limb or, yeah. or a side. Or I actually have people, when I have them stand up, 
yeah. and I'll, I'll work along their arms and I'll have them work, you know, back and forth along the thorax to the hips, all the yeah. way down to the legs. So they are, they are active the whole time. They're getting work from me. They're standing up in gravity. That's, mm -hmm. that's Rolfing's, you know, postural representation. Yeah. When I was in New York, there was a treadmill there and I would get people on the treadmill going slowly and they, they, there would be a ball, a, a physio ball up against the wall. And I would work side to side, back and forth, you know, all the way down and all the way back up because yeah. they're moving and I'm applying my manual and active stretching. It just opened things up and they were patterning. So when they got off the, the treadmill, they weren't overtreated. They now had had all of that put into the nervous system and they felt light and they felt active. They felt reactive and they felt balanced with coordination. Yeah, that is so cool. So what is your own routine? My routine, you know, we're always working on ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> so when I go up and down the stairs, I'm always doing my pulse and pattern, you know, looking up, rotating. I get to the fridge. I march mm -hmm. up the plank. I have a, tr I have a, um, a tractor tire with a 25 pound sledgehammer. And I like that because you're, you know, you're standing, extending, then you're flexing, then I switch. Yeah. So now I've rotated. I do that. So you I do that a, to gain strength? Yes, yes. I, okay. I'm starting from a pattern and it putting strength on a proper pattern. What people make a mistake of doing is they'll, they'll have a bad pattern and think if I put strength on this, I'll correct it. Now you're just putting strength on top of a pattern. Now you're gonna pull the muscle. You're going to set yourself up for an injury thinking that you're going to overpower a bad pattern. No, no, no. Yeah. Back it up. Pulse and pattern. Respect it. Now you can add your strength. Right. Also, I have I have a, a pull-up bar with a with a, um, a bench. And what I, one thing to do is also pull the head, pull the head back really firmly, you know, two seconds. Because everybody just works from here. But if you pull that head back while you're looking and supported, you're stretching all of this and then putting tone in the backside. Person's right. working on, person is working on the, you know, on their desk, you know, also, you know, this kind of, this kind of movement here, like, right? Mm -hmm. Switch feet, you know? Right. Right? To get this, you know, it's always tone on the front. It's more reactive in the front. To get more tone in the back is very good mm -hmm. for a lower back and what have you. Right. And finally, what I like to do, and actually it's coming up this next um, February 4th, they have the, the polar bear plunge for the Special Olympics. Yeah, I did that once back in 2018 with my daughter, my youngest daughter. She goes, come on, Dad, let's, she, she goes, drive me out there. And then on the way, she goes, come on, Dad, let's, you can go too. Mm -hmm. And the water was 37 and the air was 36. So it made sense to go in the water, you'd be warmer. And you went in and wow, that woke me up. So since then, I have a, a cool tub in the backyard and I go underneath for like, you know, I go under the water for like 10, 15 seconds, come back up again, maybe again, and then I'm done. And you get this wonderful, brisk, embracing blast of, 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 of cold, which really gives you a nice, even endorphin for the day. So it's a great way to help your circulation and kind of wake wake you up. And that's what I did before I did here. That's why I look so awake. I Amazing, did the yeah. Every so, day I turn my shower cold for a few seconds too. So does that also help uh, with the muscles? Yeah, yeah. Because you, okay. what it causes, it causes you, it's good for circulation and for fat and for it's just that change in your nervous system. The things we have to dose ourselves during the day with proper exercise, you know, Exercise can be a medicine, also with the water, but it has to be done intelligently. You can't just dive into it. You have to, you have to, you know, respect your limits and work up within this two-second paradigm, so you, so you don't hurt yourself. So for, for cold water for everybody, it's a you can't afford a beer for the night. Get some cold water. You feel you'll feel like you had a beer. Hmm. How about warm water? Drinking well, warm water. Well, that's a contrast. You know, you can. I'll start in the in the cold plunge. Then I'll go into the shower, hit the hot water, so that changes it. Then I'll right. then I'll go back into the plunge for the cold. They they use that in the in the spas, you know, the the contrast plunges. It's just wonderful. It just you know, uh, acclimate to it gently. Maybe you know mm -hmm. only don't go your put your head under you know feet and hands and but mm -hmm. if you respectfully advance. Then you're not going to get a you're not going to get shocked and stuff. Yeah, so I like both. I like the contrast. 
Yeah. You, you say, you know, with the pull-up bar and you stretch, I think many of us these days have, I don't know, the fascia on the front of our body is contracted. So yes. when we do these pull-ups and pull our head back, does that release the fascia or do we need yes. to do something yes. different? To yes. release the fascia? Yeah, because the fascia is, is being held tight by a, a pattern that might have too much tone, hypertone. So when you're doing that, you're, you're, you're encouraging it to, to open within the full posture. You're not just doing on one spot. You have to get the full posture involved so the fascia in the front then can, can work then with the fascia in the back. Right. Because if you get one side that's too tight and, the, and then the, and the shoulders roll forward, well, this is overstretched and the body doesn't want it to go more, so it starts to put a knot in there. The knot's supposed to stop you from moving in the wrong direction. Mm. So if you stretch this, you're not going to need the knot because now you can have tone go back and forth from front to back. Yeah. I also noticed you go down the steps sometimes backwards. Is that better for the knees? Yes. Yes. When If you're having knee problems or if you have back issues, you can go down actually on all fours. That's a modified incline crawl. Remember, that's part of your library that you started with. So if you, if you start to do that back and forth um, up and down the stairs, you can assist your back and also your, your general patterning. You can, you, can, you can speed up the resolution of your back uh, episode and then build your patterning as well. And then if you keep doing that, you know, after the back pain's left, it's not going to come back. Mm. It gives you a base to respectfully rehab it. And now you're working on general conditioning. And then after that, you can start to put strength. Two yeah. seconds. That's all I'm asking. Two seconds. <laughs> Amazing. Sam, I had a lot of fun. <laughs> I did too. Thank you so much for taking an interest in, in what we talked about and looking yeah, for forward sure. to our next conversation. Thank you.